Hi, I'm Christian Hoff. The 241 voices you hear in Ed Feldman's Tell Me How You Love the Picture are from yours truly. Today, we're in New York City, and I'm going to take you to some locations in the book. This is the site of the New York premiere of Stanley Kubrick's Lolita, but the subject matter, a grown man's sexual yearning for a young girl was unsavory. The Legion of Decency intended to place Kubrick's film in the condemned category. It fell to Ed Feldman to convince the Legion that Lolita should be the first movie to be placed in a newly created special category. No one under the age of 18 admitted. The night of the big premiere, right here at the Lowe's State Theater. A limo pulls up. James Mason and his young co-star Sue Lyon step out. They walk the red carpet arm in arm. Sue Lyon is a knockout in a virginal white fur. Ed Feldman sees his moment. He sidles up to the theater manager, points to a big sign. No one under the age of 18 admitted. With flash bulbs popping, and cameras recording the scene. The manager has no choice. He stops Sue Lyon from entering the theater to see her own picture. Instead, Ed has Lyon escorted to the counter at Rumpelmeyer's for an ice cream soda. Vanilla, of course. The photos of sweet Sue Lyon sipping her soda while Lolita premiered right here in Times Square broke in major newspapers all over the world. Pretty smart, huh? Ed Feldman had the assignment of creating two A-list premieres for one B movie. The picture was Hercules Unchained. Feldman held the West Coast premiere first, a big pool party at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Everyone who was anyone showed up to see the swimming pool loaded with nubile maidens wading through garlands of flowers. Next to the pool was a huge ice sculpture of Hercules himself emitting sprays of exotic Chanel perfume every few seconds. The trouble was, it being LA and pretty hot, the eight foot ice sculpture was soon reduced to a wet pile of ice cubes on the floor. For the East Coast premiere, Feldman learned from his mistake. The party was held indoors, right here on 48th Street at the form of 12 Caesars restaurant. He called it a night with the gods, a midnight bacchanal with living centerpieces at every table gilded bodybuilders dressed or undressed as Hercules himself. No more melting statues for Feldman. At the door, there was even a very hungry, edgy lion greeting the glitzy and the glamorous as they entered. Anything for publicity, right? And how did all those celebs enjoy the movie? Who knows? Ed never screened it, but everybody sure loved that party. It was the biggest night for a B-movie in Hollywood history. Back in the 1960s, studios had an aversion to black and white pictures. The suits thought that black and white looked artsy. The marketing types thought that it was a harder sell. Black and white was dead. Color pictures were in. But producer Ray Stark and director and Hollywood icon John Huston didn't care. They shot Night of the Iguana in glorious black and white and uh, never told the film's distributor at Metro. When the time came to enlighten the New York office, Stark and Houston enlisted the help of Ed Feldman to break the news. Ed asked the great director, what am I supposed to tell these people when they ask where's the color? There was a pause on the other end. Then John Houston's famous voice was heard. Ed, just tell them that we dream in black and white. Armed with Houston's answer, Ed entered the building on this site once the New York offices for MGM Pictures. He rode up the elevator to the eighth floor 
And a minute later, he stood facing the cigar-chewing head of sales, Morris Lefko. Lefko starts the movie. A couple of seconds later, he jumps up like he's gotten a 500-volt shock in the rear. Where's the f***ing color? Feldman says, Houston told me to tell you that we dream in black and white. That's horse left the wars. Which leaves Ed standing dangerously close to a window high over Times Square. With the image of Lefko hurling him eight stories to his death, his entire life flashing before his eyes in black and white. The movie is Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. The stars are long-standing Hollywood rivals, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. The publicist is Ed Feldman. The place, right here at 21. Now, for all their rivalry and eccentricities, Davis and Crawford were consummate pros on the set. Old studio gals, all business. They showed up on time, ready to work. That's how they could turn out a film as good as Baby Jane in only 34 days. When the picture is about to be released, Ed sets up an afternoon party right here at 21. He's going to introduce the film's legendary stars to the editor and publisher of every major magazine and newspaper in New York. Right on schedule, Davis and Crawford make their entrance arm in arm to a tremendous ovation. Ed Feldman escorts them from table to table and the buzz in the room is tremendous. Then, Davis decides to make a little speech. She stands on a chair and says, it's such a pleasure to see all of you here this wonderful afternoon. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming to my party. Crawford turns to Ed and says, that <laughs> Then she turns on her heels and storms out of the restaurant. On the set, Davis and Crawford were no nonsense, no star temperament or else you were out. They saved all that for off screen. <laughs>